For months, I've been getting bombarded with ads on my social media about this SoundPro headset. It piqued my interest and seemed to be a great headset based off of all the positive reviews on their website. However, I did come across this guy on YouTube and he didn't seem very happy. F you sell Siphon Sound Pro. You're more like scam pros. I contacted Siphon to see if they would send me one of these headsets to test and they agree. So in this video, I'm gonna unbox and review the Sound Pro headset and give you my honest opinion about it. Disclaimer. Just because they sent me this headset doesn't mean it's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. I actually found a few things I don't like about it. Now let's hop into it. This headset comes in at $199 on their website at the time of recording. That's not very cheap. Now let's go over the features. It has ultra thin speakers that are 9.6 millimeters thick, slim controller, 40 millimeter drivers, massive sound, 115 plus dB, it has Bluetooth 5.0, also it's IPX5 waterproof, a built-in microphone, glove-friendly controls, a 10 plus hour battery life, USB-C charging, and it also has reinforced braided cables. Now that we went over all the features, let's unbox this bad boy. Full disclosure, I already opened this and installed it on the helmet to test it before the weather went to crap in Ohio. So this is the box that it comes in. It's a very nice box. I mean, I would hope so for $200. All right, so we'll pull the top off of here. This is what the inside looks like. You got the two speakers right here and then the controller right there. Then you go ahead and take that out. Comes with a nice velvet bag full of goodies. Let's open this up. It's got a zipper on top, you unzip it. And then we got a USB-C charging cord to charge the headset. And then you have this plastic bag filled with your Velcro and all the sticky stuff. Go ahead and open this up. You you also have the, the covers that go over the speakers here. Nice foam. What else we got inside here? Oh, you also have a clip that you can screw on to the controller so then you can clip it onto your shirt or wherever you want to clip it. The last thing in the bag, you have a little allen key so that way you can screw the clip onto the actual controller then they give you a little siphon sticker that you can use and of course the user guide and in addition they also send you these ear cushions these are supposed to provide more bass and be a little more comfortable go ahead and open these up as you can see these are a lot thicker than just the, the foam covers that go on there. So that way they can press up against your ear. And I'm guessing with a better seal on your ear, that's what provides more bass for you. Then of course you got the two speakers. They are pretty thin here. Here's the controller. And then on the back side there, right about here, that's where you would screw in the clip. I will say though, the cord that connects everything, it, it seems very durable. Nice quality, I like it. Now let me show you what this looks like with the foam speakers on there. To install this, it's stupid simple. You literally just clip this onto the speaker here. And it's on. And look how much thicker it is now. Let me show you the other speaker. You can clearly see how much thicker it gets. Now I'm not gonna show the installation process because it's super easy. All you have to do is take the speakers, put them inside the helmet. A lot of helmets already have the pre-made holes for them. So you just slap them in there and then you mount the controller, typically on the left side because you wanna have your brake hand free. And then you turn it on and the very first time you turn it on, it's already in pairing mode. So all you have to do is hop onto your phone and find Sound Pro under your Bluetooth and connect it. it. It was seamless. Let's go ahead and test this out on the road and then we'll come back into the studio and I'll give you my thoughts about this headset. What's up guys? I am out in Georgia and I am currently on Robert Simmons three year YouTube anniversary and I'm trying out this new Siphon headset. So I've had the Cardo for about six years and when it comes to sound, the speakers are always too darn quiet. And it's hard for me to hear the music. But I'm telling you, I hopped on the freeway this morning in here at Georgia. And uh, the group ride that we're on right now, 80 miles an hour. I can hear this music clear as day. Now, as far as the comms go, uh, the OK Google doesn't work very well unfortunately the ease of use 
It's just one press of the button right there, then you just turn it. Absolutely beautiful, not complicated. If I had big bulky gloves on, I, I mean, it would be easy as heck. As far as that aspect of listening to music and writing, I, I give this a five out of five. As far as the sound quality, I think it sounds good. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be like Bose headphones. The one thing I really like about it is it's just so simplistic. It doesn't have a bunch of buttons like the Cardo. Uh, hooking it up to my phone was super easy. I do want to mention this is not a headset if you're looking to communicate. This is pretty much strictly for listening to music. One thing I would like for them to do is make a boom mic so that way you can actually use the the voice commands and stuff because that that would just make it so much better and it would knock knock it out of the park. All right, guys, let's go back to the studio, back where I'm in Ohio, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Now that I've used this for about a week straight, let me tell you what I like about it. First on the list is the battery life. I used this headset for about two hours during Robert Simmons' anniversary ride, and then when I came back home, I used it every time I commuted to and from work, which is a half an hour one way. So I got about eight to nine hours of testing time with it, and I didn't charge it at all when I took it out of the box. So when they say about 10 hours of battery life, I believe it. My next like is the simple controls. All you have is this jog dial. You click it to the left and to the right to turn the music up and down. You turn it to the left and hold or turn it right and hold and you can switch the songs and then to start and stop the music all you got to do is click the jog dial then this leads me into my next like is that it's easy to use with gloves on i use my fall gloves and my big bulky winter gloves and didn't have any issues just because it's so simple next on the list is the loudness this thing gets Plenty loud for when you're on the highway. You can hear perfectly. That's not an issue. I also like the sleek design. It looks nice on the helmet. It's not big and bulky and doesn't add any weight to the helmet. And lastly, it connects very easily to your phone. The first time you take it out of the box, you turn it on and then you search in your Bluetooth on your phone and connect to Sound Pro. And then every time after that you connect it to your phone, it connects in about two seconds. It worked perfect. Now onto the dislikes. The microphone. It does have a built-in microphone in one of the speakers, but it doesn't work very well. If I was on the bike and it was just running, sitting still, I couldn't use the voice assistant on my phone. And of course, if you're going down the road, it wasn't working either. I made a phone call, but it was completely pointless. The other person on the phone couldn't hear what I was saying, so I don't even know why they put a mic in it, honestly. I would love to see them put a boom mic on this, and this would complete the system. One thing that I found that I didn't like about it was with the jog dial. You can see here if I turn it to the right, but if you go too far, it stays in place and it locks there. And I know it's not supposed to do that because I saw it in some other videos, but you can release it and it, it doesn't really affect anything. It's just more of an annoyance. And for 200 bucks, I don't think it should do that. Speaking of price, I think this is a little expensive at $200. And here's why. I did some research and found a Cardo that's comparable in price. And it has way more options. The main difference is that the Cardo comes with a boom mic. So you can utilize all the voice features. You definitely end up getting a lot more bang for your buck. Now, what about the sound quality? Now, Siphon told me that they mainly focus on the sound quality coming out of the speakers. And in my opinion, it's not too bad. I'm no audiophile, but from what I can hear, I don't think it's the best I ever heard. And it's definitely not the worst. Now with my ears, it sounded a little flat and I even adjusted the EQ in my phone. As far as the sound quality goes, I'll give it a solid three and a half out of five stars. The last thing I'm not a fan of are these ear cushions. They are pretty comfortable when you first put them in, but after a few hours of riding, your ears do get sore. I'm pretty sure the issue is they're just too thick and when you put them in your helmet without any spacers at all, they're just pushing real hard up against your ears. These might be good for shorter trips, especially if you wanna get more bass out of these speakers. So who do I think the sound pros for? This is for the motorcyclist that strictly wants to listen to music. This isn't for somebody that needs to be able to make and answer phone calls 
Talk to other riders via intercom or user voice assistant. I wish the price was a little bit lower considering all you can do is listen to music. If you want to see some of my other product reviews, check out this video right here. As always, this is Jogo with Jogo Motorcycle Adventures and until next time, ride on.